Salutations. Uh, welcome. I wanted to take a few minutes a day to kind of show off a little Champions of Crit action for anybody who might be interested, including uh, some of my friends. So uh, Champions of Crit is, in, is one of the gold box Dungeons & Dragons games from the early, early 90s. <clears throat> possibly the late 80s, but it says 1990 here in the notes here on the side, development public by Strategic Simulations uh, and the such. I had played this way back in the day when it had come out. I played it on GOG, and uh, now I'm playing it on Exodos, which is a program that you can find to download, and this is a really great interface for playing a lot of your old favorite DOS games, and it comes with all these it comes with so much. I could do a whole video on Exodus. It's just really great. If you ask me for it, maybe I'll do that. But um, it is a great way to uh, play your DOS games and the such. So I can highly, highly recommend that. So uh, let's start the game here. Gonna fire this guy up. It's kind of got the music in it, but that's because it's set to me. This good. We'll wait till the game starts and then we'll listen to the music. Oh, let's see here. It's going to give you a bunch of options. <clears throat> Whether, you know, if you're using Exodos anyways, it gives you all these options. I always like to go for number five, which is MT32 Music and Tandy FX. I, I'd prefer if they had Tandy Music, but I don't I don't see that option here. I played the original game with Tandy Music, and I thought it was awesome. Uh, but for now, I'll, I'll stick with MT32, because there's a huge difference between that and the Sound Blaster. You get to hear it here. It usually just comes in with the opening music. cuts off right there but uh, back in the day this was um this was the the bomb for for um uh, you know for for me opening music that song was still stuck in my head these days i've played a lot of the glow box games that's the one song that sticks in my head i'll be right okay. back i am back now before you actually start playing the game you need to look over the instruction books these are very important because building your character, knowing what the limits are, uh, it's going to be important that you look at this. And we'll go over exactly why in a minute. But first, as you first crack open the insertion book, which you can get uh, get these pretty easily just from um, uh, Exodos will have them. If you find the GOG version, you get them. And of course, you can find these books easily enough on, on the internet. Uh, to the Circle of Knights, I, your humble servant, send you greetings. This missive is sent without the knowledge of my commandant and in violation of his orders. I take this action in full knowledge of the consequences it may bring upon me, and uh, through the conviction that in doing so, I fulfill my oath. The commandant has been acting strange of late, as if inflicted by some stark spell. I know that information of evil pretend, uh, pretends has not been forwarded to your august body as required by our charter. Many of our most faithful followers have died suddenly and mysteriously within our fort last fortnight. Within this last fortnight, the commandant has been too ready with replacements for them. Replacements which have an unclear feel. I ask that you send tonight a pure character in high stature to investigate my conduct and this report. As further evidence, I provide in its entirety a letter found on the body of one Hal Halban, a ranger of the highest character. And you can see there there is a, a, a lot of text. So a big part of the, the game is definitely reading. You have to spend some time reading uh, this. And to be fair, as you can see, they give you very quick descriptions and introductions. I love the uh, the old artwork here. Really helps to draw your imagination in. But but they 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 don't spend too much time going to deep details. Uh, and this is really great. They just kind of get right into uh, into the nitty gritty. Uh, they will go into all the different classes here. Uh, 
yeah, the 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 uh, requirements. If you want to join the Knights, you got to have so much strength and all that other jazz. Uh, things like that. The different uh, the different uh, alignments. In Tuesday's nature, this adventure, no evil characters are permitted. Haha. <laughs> Just like one of my games, and then you can he even talks about uh, some different uh, different class makeups and stuff you might want to try, and why you should you know take a look at these. One of the things you can do is you can split classes, like you can have a cleric uh, fighter, red mage, for example, or a cleric wizard, uh, and the such. And I'll show you my party and, and why I chose them and the such. But you can check all of this uh, stuff out. But it, it it does it does tell you. Um, some recommended stuff to kind of get you started. Now, one thing you'll notice is they'll tell you to take two long swords. Why? Why would a character need two long swords? Uh, the mage needs two quarter staffs. Well, that's because the reason for purchasing two of each of these melee weapons is a combat baz draconians. When a baz dies, they will sometimes pull a weapon from the character's hand, kind of get stuck in them until they dissipate. If you read the books, uh, the weapon's not retreat until after combat. So, uh, you know, the game's giving you like read and you know it will help you a lot because otherwise uh, you will find yourself at a bit of a disadvantage now this is a different campaign it uses some different house rules so to speak uh, there are different rules that they put into this game that you would have like in pools of radiance or the earlier games those were more raw uh, this puts in rules to support this universe so you'll want to read through those like for example you actually get extra spells uh, for picking particular deities and your wizards get extra spells based on the moon actually get to do their spells at a higher level at a higher effective level due to the moon so the status of the moon so it's very very interesting uh and whatnot very interesting to look through and then it kind of gives you a preview of some of the uh the monsters that you'll be fighting uh, and what have you and then you get to these journal entries and th these are these are really important because uh these will pop up as you're as you're playing through the game looks like this scan actually had some written written stuff uh written stuff on here as like this is like someone's real scanned in a book here that they actually checked off and stuff that's funny i think i can find a cleaner scan but this is the one i happen to have at the moment uh so i'm going to go past all of this and get to the nitty gritty towards the back we do get in and uh, you know a description of the spells is very quick it's down and dirty nothing too complicated about any of this at least not uh, not that they give you uh, the downs uh, the downside is it doesn't really do a great job of of giving you nitty gritty details uh, that you might need sometimes and you have to experiment to figure out exactly uh how some of this stuff works uh, one thing about like some of these spells, like you take in large. So what happens is a lot of the spells in the older D&D games would automatically heighten in power with your caster level. You didn't have to memorize it in a higher slot to get a better benefit. In large, for example, if it uh, makes the target larger and stronger, the higher the caster's level, the larger and stronger the target gets. If the caster is 6th level, the target becomes as strong as an ogre, which would probably be like a 20 strength. If the caster 10th, it becomes as strong as a fire giant. So that's going to be, you know, probably a 22 strength or whatever have you. Uh, so very, very cool. And it stays at a first level spell. You do not have to cast it as a higher level to get the cooler effect. Uh, that's just something we kind of came up with in recently in Pathfinder 2nd Edition in particular, really, um, this whole heightening uh, concept. Because we couldn't nerf wizards enough, but I'll get off my soapbox. Uh, magic missiles, another one that you will get more missiles as your 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 caster levels up. So one of the things that I miss in newer editions of the of, of the game is is when I would do magic missile and take it at first level, it was something that always stayed in my first level slot. It would automatically do more more damage as I went on. But enemies would have more and more hit points so magic missile was always kind of that niche spell that would do some guaranteed damage and finish people off all the time and it was at first level and it, it it served that purpose and it didn't just get worse and worse nowadays you have to kind of keep it into higher ranks but that's kind of cool uh, that here it does that same thing with fireball up to a point uh if you read fireball it actually has a lot of description here for fireball but it basically does 1d6 per level of the caster to all the, the targets. Now, as I said, sometimes they leave out some details. And in the rules as written, I believe Fireball would cap out when you hit 9th or 10th level. And then you need to lay Blast Fireball to go above that. So um, I don't know how that's implemented in the video game off the top of my head. And then you got these tables. Now, 
we mentioned before the importance of looking these things over. You notice here that when you look at there's maximum levels by race, class, and prime requisite score and whatever have you, and you could be capped on the levels that you can do based on your race and stuff like that. That's why I usually go to Dark Queen of Kryn because uh, this journal here is only going to show like a bunch of sevens and eights because the highest level in in the first game is seven or eight. So the Kryn games is a trilogy of games. Let me start over. There's Champions of Kryn, Death Knights of Kryn, and Dark Queen of Kryn. And you can take your characters from one game to the other. They carry over. It's great. The bad side is if you created something that couldn't get up to max level, um, then, then that would stop stunt your growth, so to speak. So you can come over here to the last book here of Dark Queen of Kryn, and you can find the table somewhere in here that shows you uh, the, the maximum levels by race and class right here. And you'll see that a lot of them say max. So uh, humans can be max at everything. The elves can become max clerics, rangers, and magic users. And they, the Sylvester, these are Sylvester elves, can't become thieves at all. They cannot become knights. Uh, Qualidisti elves can become max level thieves, max level clerics, max level rangers. So good to kind of look at that and figure out and plan in advance so you don't run into uh, any of those walls. I can spend more time going more into this. We're going to get into the game, but if you want more details on this or thoughts or anything, just let me know. I can help answer any questions. So uh, with that said, we'll jump into okay. the game. So let's see if we can start the game here. I usually don't use mouse. I could, you could play this game entirely with the, the keyboard. Uh, there is a kind of a mouse interface here, but it's kind of <laughs> primitive. So uh, the original games, the original GoBox games were just uh, keyboard and everything anyways. In the end of the last home in Solace, a brave band gathers in preparation for a grim journey. The lands reconquer from the dragon armies are to be scoured of the last vestiges of evil. Now, this takes place after a number of the books in the Dragonlance Chronicle series. It's not necessary to read those books beforehand. It, it can help give you some foundation and flesh things out. Or you could just play this game and go back to those books later as more of a prequel. It, it's really up to you, but they're going to, uh, you know, just um, keep that in mind. At least I think that's the way it is. I'm, I'm like 90% sure on that. I'm not the Dragonlance expert, but that's what I understand. Joining you on the trip is an older Knight of the Rose. He is introduced as Sir Carl Gardson. His mission is to evaluate the outpost for the Council of the Knights. So we just read that they need somebody to come out there. Once the cup is organized, you begin to journey to the outpost. The party travels through Salamnia and arrives near uh, Thordal. You are escorted to see the Commandant. Sir Call greets you at the office. The Commandant and I are discussing some important issues. Your first mission is to patrol uh, Thordal and report any suspicious activities immediately. Sir Call continues to be recorded as Journal Entry 51. So that's where you need to kind of come over here to the book. You're going to look for Journal Entry 51. We're gonna zip on down here. I pasted this in the in my Discord channel uh, just a little bit ago, but we'll read it out here. Uh, the worst monsters our scouts have reported anywhere in the area are hobgoblins. Draconians and evil dragons have long since abandoned this area to our forces. Still, be a little weary on your way to Thordal. Also, be sure to report back here immediately if anything unusual or dangerous occurs. This outpost depends on information brought back by patrols such as yours. Good luck, and may Paladine watch over you. Okay. Also, buy and ready equipment from the armory. Memorize spells before going out. So when you originally start playing uh, this game, uh, you're gonna be, you're gonna, your 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 party's gonna have like no equipment uh, at all, uh, and the such. So you're going to need to go to the armory. Uh, you can hit P to pull together your money. Uh, we've got a whopping twenty steel. Uh, which is not very much money. There's no gold and silver. That was one of that kind of the house rules they have here. There's just one currency, and it makes things kind of much simpler. And you can come here and you can buy uh, extra weapons or, or whatever. And then once you got them bought, you can come in here and equip them. So all of your fighters are going to have like a ring meal, a shield, and a longsword. We can't afford the good plate mail yet. 
and we'll go through the characters here. So first off, there's Phil the Fighter, picked human fighter. Uh, humans can get the best strength score, the 18100. And uh, I'd have to go through this in detail to kind of explain what 18100 means as a pure, as opposed to pure 18. Uh, but uh, uh, in LT and D, uh, after you were, if you're, uh, you could have 18 strength, any character could have 18 strength, but only fighters would get 18 and then a number after it from 0, 1 to 0, 0, which represents 100. Uh, just like the D100. I don't know why they did it this way. I have no clue. I'm sure there's some explanation somewhere. But suffice to say, the uh, if you just had an 18 strength, I think you had like a plus one hit and plus two to damage. But if you had like 18 100, you'd have like a plus three to hit and plus six damage. And then there was a range in between. So f human fighters can get all the way at the top. So that's that's what we're that's what we're doing there with this guy. He's just your pure tanky guy that's going to go up. He's not he's going to do some good damage early on. Fighters don't scale really the best, but they're good for cleanup uh, and whatever have you, and for holding down the front lines and and uh, and, and occasionally shutting down enemy casters. And then we have Mike the Ranger. Uh, Ranger, very similar to fighters, allowed to have 18-100 strength. Uh, one other thing about fighters and martial classes, they are also the ones who get the extra hit points off a of con. If you're playing a wizard, uh, you only get two hit points a level. If you have an 18 con, a 16, 17, or an 18. With fighters, if they have a 16, they get plus two. The 17, they get plus three. And a, a con of, of 18, they get plus four. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of great differences between the old-fashioned fighter and ranger. The ranger would get a few of the uh, wizard spells that they had chosen out to make them that were thematically appropriate. Oh, like a, maybe like a good berry and things like that. I, I don't put a lot of stock in it, but it's just nice to have something different other than just putting two fighters in the front. I could have gone easily gone with uh, with a knight, except I don't like how they donate gold every time I walk into a settlement. There is later on, I think they added back in paladin. Paladin's a core class. And usually one of my tanky guys in the front is a paladin. But but for now we'll just do ranger. But we didn't have all the mechanical differences like like you do nowadays. There wasn't feats. There wasn't a lot of mechanics to these. They just went up and hit things with a with a stick. That was pretty much their job. Uh, then we have Greg, who is a fighter thief. Now I hear what you're saying. He's not a Kinder. He's a Qualinisty elf. Hear me out. Hear me out. Kinders can go max level in thief. They can't do anything in fighter. And we really want to have Fighter. Fighter has by far the best Faco in the game, which means two hit armor class zero or is the old version of the attack bonus. So you want to, I want to have somebody who's who's pretty good at that. Uh, he is an elf as opposed to a human because the uh, humans can only be focused on one class at a time. The elves and other races can be multi-classed. And so he's a fighter thief, which means his experience gets evenly divided between both classes. Uh, he'll never be as high level as, let's say, Phil the Focused Fighter, but he'll just be a level or two underneath. Uh, but that's okay. He does get sneak attack when you flank somebody else, and I'll show you that in combat. And when they sneak attack, they do they start off doing double damage, and by the end of the game, they're doing quadruple, quintuple damage when certain conditions are met. So he can definitely, I just think it, I don't think that damage is necessary to win the game or anything, but it's just fun to see it kick in here and there. We have Brooke, who is the human cleric, uh, just 100% focused cleric, definitely going to be a powerhouse in healing. Clerics can have good armor class and can can also uh, help support the front lines a bit because uh, they, they can wear pretty much most of the best armor and the such. They're not going to do a lot of damage. They're not going to hit very often. They don't have the fighters to hit. Uh, you could make a fighter cleric. And, and 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 with uh, with one of the other races and kind of get there, but I like having the best healing spells possible, and the other the you know the extra damage they kick in from being able to hit more often isn't worth slowing down the the cleric progression in my opinion. But I can see somebody going another way with that. We have Savine, the uh, cleric of Mishkael, white mage, and so this is another uh, Qualinisty elf that is split. Between uh, between two classes, this one being cleric and white mage here. So she, white mage is just a reference to the fact that she is a good aligned wizard. Uh, red mage would be neutral aligned wizard. Let me just check over here. So they're both Mishkael because you get more healing uh, dice, so to speak. Uh, when you cast a healing spell, healing's pretty weak in this game until you get to the higher level. So 
you, you usually use it more for healing outside of combat than healing in combat, really. And then, uh, and then uh, Shirley, who is the pure red mage, so we can get those fireballs as as quick as possible. Once you've got those items bought uh, and equipped, you want to go ahead and uh, go to the end. Make sure you memorize your spells. So if I go here and go to magic, the these are the spells in her spell book, and these are what I have memorized. Normally, you can memorize two spells, but because there's a full moon at the beginning of the game. Uh, for white and red mages, they get bonus spells. So we've got a couple of extra spells in there just for kicks and giggles um, and whatnot. And then once once, once you're ready, you're ready to set on off. So let's get out of here. He told us we need to go to Thoradol. So we're going to go ahead and leave. And uh, when you exit, you come out here to the world map. Uh, we're going to go up here a little bit. We're going to move. We'll go north. And boom, we already get a cutscene. As you top a rise, you spot a caravan under attack. Draconians have already massacred the men and are now slaughtering the women and children. They pause when they see you, then they rush to attack. Oh no, Mr. Bill. You have to play your own background music for some of your favorite games, if, if you're into that, uh, whatever. Now, the combat uh, screen is really kind of zoomed in here. So you have to kind of scan around. Uh, you can also do, sometimes you can do, what you can do is you can hit, uh, press A for aim, and then P for previous, and there's our targets over there. We can see there, uh, you can see the range of the bottom of the screen, and these guys are 20 tiles away, which is kind of the equivalent of 100 feet. So we're, we're not going to be able to hit them with any of uh, those first level spells outside of Magic Missile, maybe. Uh, so a lot, of, uh, you know, a lot of things you can just kind of do is let them come to you. Um, you can see they're taking their turns really fast, and they're all rushing up here. Uh, let me see if I can get a little close enough here to maybe cast a good old sleep spell on them. Now, sleep spells don't have a very far range at all, and once you commit to this, you got to be, <laughs> you know, you got to make sure you're kind of in range here. Uh, they're not really grouped together, and I think, I can't remember, but I think it's it's pretty much just like a, a five-foot bursty type of deal here. So we'll pop it in there, and hopefully I don't put myself to sleep, which has happened before. So he falls asleep. The other one's unaffected. So that one on the right's completely asleep and ready to be uh, coup de grade. The one on the left... And the one over here, of course, are unaffected. And I want to engage them so that, uh, so, um, yeah. I want to engage them so they don't go right after my wizard. Another thing to kind of keep in mind about this game is at the end of your turn, if you don't attack, you can guard, which is kind of like Overwatch from XCOM, which means you basically ready an attack. Uh, on top of that, just about everything has attack of opportunity if you try to run away or, or, or whatever. Um, if you cast a spell, it doesn't provoke, so to speak. Um, but um, it, it doesn't provoke. But if they attack you uh, that while you're casting, then then that can get a little scary because that can interrupt your spell casting if they hit. Now, so we got Brooke the cleric here, and this guy was sleeping, so I'll probably be able to coup de gras him. Boom! And I said you kill him one cruel blow, and he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes down like a bag of chips. So we'll put that one on Overwatch. Now this one over here was attacked by Greg the Ranger, and this is my rogue. I try to make him look, or I'm sorry, not by Greg the Ranger, by uh, Mike the Ranger up here. I'm playing Greg the Rogue, and the way flanking works is the enemy's facing the direction of the person who attacked him last, though he can only change direction, you know, once before his next turn. So when this guy attacked him, he's now technically facing up there. You can't always tell because they're only there looking to the right or the left, and that doesn't help you know if they're facing up or down. But I know he just attacked him, which means if I come in from the south, that will be an official backstab if I hit. So I'm going to go up here. We'll watch the messages to see if I get a backstab. Backstabs for 16 points of damage. Oh, I love it. The, the satisfying sound of a backstab. Now, I killed, my fighter killed him there, but I lost my weapon. It doesn't change the graphic because that was way ahead of this time. But we'll see that Phil has a no-equip sword on his next turn. 
because he lost his weapon. Um, I'm going to delay my turn here. All right, so that guy came over to here, and I don't know if he attacked somebody or not. But now he's kind of looks like he's facing this cleric, Brook, here. So I'm going to take Brook, and I'm going to attack him, which means now he's facing to the southeast. I'm not going to have the wizard do anything here. Now, it doesn't matter who else attacks him. He can only change direction once in the turn. So he's still facing to the southeast. Now I can take my rogue up here and attack him from behind. Backstab. Eight points of damage. So a lovely, lovely, juicy backstab. I don't know if there's any other enemies. Nope. Um, battle is over. We're victorious. And the party is victorious. Um, they left some money. We can go ahead and pool that. And we got now 33 altogether. We'll share that. Uh, now, if I take a look at Phil here, I take a look at his items. You can see none of his swords are equipped. It did give me back. I had two swords. And it did give me back one of my swords. Um, but it doesn't automatically equip it back for you. So you got to remember to go and equip back any, any weapons that got taken out there. The caravan lies in waste before you. The air is filled with the sounds of wailing women and children. All of the draconians are slain save one who rips a book from a dead man's hand. He turns to you and merely laughs. Then he takes a step and disappears. One of the surviving women comes up. Brave warriors, will you help us reach the outpost? All of our menfolk have died. Do you help? I wonder what happens if you say no, but um, I don't want to reload this game. So <laughs> thank you for your help. Congratulations, the party gets experience. So you go over to the, uh, the commandant here. You enter the office of the to the sounds of battle. Sir Carl drives his sword through the commandant who collapses. The body then rides and becomes a civic, which is one of those draconian things. Sir Carl murmurs, I was afraid of this. As you report, his face grows gray. This is much worse than we feared. We have a patrol and throttle. And Caramon leads it. Find him. Tell him he is desperately needed here. The imposter has emptied this outpost of troops. I know you are inexperienced, but I have no one else to send. All right, so we need to go get uh, Karamon, it looks like. Uh, so uh, basically, they didn't have a lot of extra room for a lot of extra text here. So hence why we have to do journal entries and look at a book for those journal entries. It also means we don't quite have a, a, a whole lot of extra um, fluffy story and whatnot. That's what the books were for. But one of the things that it's pointing out here is that these these creatures could 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 be made you, you got implications of this and what we read earlier that they can they can look like uh the people and take over if you're a fan of deep space nine uh or battlestar galactica where you have alien spies among us that are you know trying to kill us from within well these guys were doing it a lot earlier than any of those guys so um locate cameron and throttle all right so uh, we can go to the inn. We can we can hit the fix button to heal up all of our wounds. Fix causes your clerics to cast out their healing spells and then regain them again. Uh, we can rest to get back any of our magic, I think, because I did cast one sleep spell. I do need to come back here and rememorize it. Um, in some of the games, I swear it would remember which spells you cast or not, but this was a bonus spell I cast, so maybe that's why I had to go and manually pick it back out again. Okay, save, save B, save C. All right, so if I leave, so we're over here. I I don't exactly remember where Throttle is at, but he wants us to go to Throttle. And again, this is where the book kind of comes in handy because the map doesn't exactly label everything for you. And you can see that Throttle is exactly in the upper left-hand corner there on the side. So... Uh, that is where we will we will go. We're just at the outpost south of Throttle. You're near Throttle. Do you enter? Oh, Throttle's off limits to you. Leave and no one gets hurt. What do you do? Well, I... Boy, those cutting edge graphics really draw me into the experience, but I do think I'm going to have to attack. I don't like his attitude. And you end up low. Um... So yeah, so we're fighting all of these, and you know, old gold box games did not give a hoop and a wooden nickel about balance, right? 
they're just going to throw all these guys, you know, all these guys at me at once. They just don't care. Uh, they, they just really don't. Uh, it was it was my job to make sure that I had some overpowered casters who could cast some overpowered sleep spells and that I had a strong front line that could protect those casters from getting completely overwhelmed. Because it turns out no matter how powerful your casters are, if they don't get initiative um, uh, or whatever, they're pretty easy to swap and kill very quickly. So uh, luckily our rangers kind of help here to help hold the front lines. And... Well, well, we're going to do really bad there. Uh, we're going to bless everybody. That's what I'm going to do. Bless. And we're going to cast sleep. Now, this is the old edition. So what happens when you start casting a spell, you know, you guys know, like in Pathfinder, you have an initiative number. Like you might be 10 on the initiative. Well, the spells have an initiative. And if a spell is like three initiative, that means you, you might be 10 when you start casting it, but then it doesn't get done until it goes down to number seven on the initiative, right? If it's going down on initiative, because um, the highest numbers are at the top, lowest numbers are at the bottom. So that, you know, the, the length of how long it takes to cast a spell can push you down. Magic, mil magic missiles are very fast spell, usually goes off right away, but sleep on the other hand. Uh, well, it looks like that one's pretty fast. All right. So we're going to stick a whole bunch of these goons and, and tell them to take a nighty-night. Oh, look at them falling asleep. Did he say, wow, old person is fine. Yeah. Well, I got a whole bunch of them there. Uh, now, the only problem is, you know, to get my rogue over there, my gray rogue, I'm going to end up provoking an attack of opportunity here. But that's okay. Because then I can coup de gras them. Ha, 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 ha. And then we have Savine, and she's got sleep spells. So everybody is a winner with sleep spells. That's the one thing we've learned about this game. Everyone can take a little dirt nap. Look at all those hobgoblins falling asleep. It's great. And then you coup de gras them. And you bless everybody. Oh, oh, he hit somebody. The messages go a little fast. I probably slowed them down just a tad because I didn't see how much damage he did. But that was very rude of him. And if he's right there, I don't think I can use a ranged weapon. I don't think she has a ranged weapon. Does she have a ranged weapon? Uh, she has a sling, but I don't think... I think for some odd reason, she can't use a sling. I thought clerics could use swing, slings. That's okay. Apparently they can kill hobgoblins. Uh, oh, he's got a helpless one over here, but I'm going to have him go up here, and we can see all these guys are helpless here. Got to have him start killing people off. Also, your wizard with the darts, I use darts for only one reason, and that's for killing off helpless people. It's the most deadly dart ever. Oh, oh is he too far away for a dart? Maybe because he's behind a solid wall that will sometimes, you know... Do it. <laughs> Killed by dart. So even even your low level um, adventures felt really powerful back in these days. If you played it tactically, you protected your casters and things like that. You could you could do what we kind of do at high levels in Pathfinder nowadays. You could do that even at low levels. But all it took was some bad luck or, you know, bad initiative or whatever have you. And it was pretty easy to also, or just bad saving throws when a dragon breathed on you and you could still die just as quickly. So, wow, he's got a lot of hit points. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so it's those enemy fighters. They're like, they must have like a ton of hit points. Uh, a few items. Yeah, I don't think she can do this. Yeah, she can't do the range weapon thing. It's a shame. Um, can I just uh, move there? I'll take an attack of opportunity because I need to kill these guys before they wake up. Ooh, he got hit for seven. Uh, 
Let's see here. I'll move my wizard up here, I think, and hit this guy with the dart if he's still helpless. Yep. Ah, that hurt. Uh, let me have my... So this is... I'm going to try to use Greg for a backstab. To do that, I need to have him delay his turn. Let other... Let another person close to that guy go first. Oh, he's the last one on initiative. Well, crap. All right. So I'll have these guys delay for a sec. Oh, he surrendered. Son of a gun. I wonder if I can keep him for... Uh, for questioning. There we go, 146 experience points. I, I, I need the game to tell me, Greg, and the party is victorious. Oh, that'd be good. Right? I like how the picture, I got the picture of all the treasure here. Uh, lots of weapons here, right? And you almost want to take them all because you're going to go and sell them somewhere. Ooh, Greg's down to single digit hit points. That's never a comfortable place to be. Um, I don't think any of these are magical, but Savine has to tech magic. And then she can see if any of these are magical, and they're not, sadly. But uh, the ring mail is worth a little bit of money. So any ring mail, you, if your fighter can carry it without getting too weighed down by encumbrance, it, it's, it's always worth grabbing this stuff and then taking it and selling it later in early levels. Later on, I just only take the magical stuff. Oh, there's some scale mail. Wait a minute, scale better than ring? Well, there's one way to find out. So, let's see. His encumbrance now is 36, 46. His movement's down to 9. Uh, if we take a look, 9 is okay for me. Let's see. So, he's using ring right now, and his armor class is 2. So, if we change this to scale mail, it's now down to 1. So, scale mail is better. We'll trade this one to Mike. I don't think... Oh, let's see here. Do we have some more scale mail for Greg? I'm, Greg's a fighter thief. He might be able to do the scale mail. Scale mail, scale mail. Oh, there's some scale mail for Greg. Yeah, I just don't know if he can backstab in it. That's the million dollar question. I think he can. If he can, it's definitely another reason to uh, to um, to multi-class. All right. Do you want to go back and? Yeah, I think the swords can also be a good source of money, and they don't usually. Oops, they don't usually weigh as much as the armor does. Uh, see, now his movement's down to six. I got a little greedy there. Uh, moving still down to six. That might just be the scale mail. Yeah, it's the scale mail. Scale mail slows you down. All right. And now we're in an official maze. This is this is how they used to do auto mapping back in the day. I am using a plugin that's supposed to help you auto map the dungeons. I think I've never used this before, so uh, it's called the Gold Box Companion. And I don't know if you've ever used this. XP Tables Journal Setup, Clue Book, Open Folder, Set Folder. Uh, 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 uh. I don't see a button here that. that that shows me how to use uh, the map, but for now, I'll just use the in-game map. It's not a big deal. I'm used to playing with the in-game map, but I'll look into that later. Um, I don't know if I try to encamp and 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 rest if I'm going to get myself into trouble with random encounters. So you can hit fix, and there we go. Everyone's automatically healed up. Um, I think it was Savine used a. Uh, used a spell, so she used a clear, she used a clear, oh, detect magic, and she used a bonus spell, sleep. There she goes, we got our spells back and everything. Yeah, sometimes you can do that whole, I get through one battle and rest thing. Oh. 
you don't you, you know you always say beforehand just in case you're unlucky oh we have a we have a pick oh a cleric is opening a chest his undead minions attack well now if you're using undead minions we automatically know you're not a good person sad Yeah, it's like, sadly, rumor has it that uh, skeletons are immune to the almighty sleep spell. Honestly, I'm not even sure they're susceptible to swords. Oh, a cleric surrounding himself with a bunch of skeletons, though, is a surefire way to get whole person cast all over your party. Um, what you can do, that's probably the one time where magic missile really shines. His magic missile his candy ass before he goes and you can't cast spells on any round that you've been hit by any damage and magic missile is a guaranteed damage so it's a good way to shut that caster down for that round so people are like oh fight uh, wizards are over power back if you got hit in the round you couldn't cast there were checks about they were clunky don't get me wrong they they were clunky. Oh, aim. Man, you'll see if I can hit him with the dart. Oh, you throw three darts in a round, one of them one of them's you gonna hit even with a wizard's bad uh aiming. Uh oh, he's casting hold person, there it goes. Ah, jeez, oh, Pete. And I can't, I can't get to him over there. There it goes. He just slayed my, my uh, cleric in one hit because of old person. I don't know if they're dead dead or just uncon- Oh, I, oh they're not dead dead because I can bandage them. Bandaging just keeps them from bleeding out. That skeleton has like one hit point left. Sadly, when you get knocked out, you don't get any XP. Sorry, Mike. Ooh, we had 200 steel, though. Holy cow, I'm rich. And he had cleric scrolls and potions. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, I think, huh, I thought I had to detect magic spell. <laughs> I know Savine had to take my, uh, there it is, detect. Okay, so we can see here that all of the shield is magical. So you go ahead and pop that on your fighter. It's probably like a shield plus one. And we'll give the cleric spells to Brooke. I think the rest of this is just normal stuff, so we'll skip it. This looks like a safe place to rest, which is probably good because, you know, we almost got one person at least went down. Mm. Ugh, this is going to be one of those games where you have to re-memorize uh, the spells. It doesn't remember what you memorized last time. I'm kind of surprised. I thought by this game they had fixed that. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but... Let's see here. A few items. Magic cast... So she has neutral two K, a cast of neutralized poison, which hardly ever comes. It's all neutralized poison. I'm not ever sure I'm ever going to use that in the game. Oh, I'm trying to remember if I ever used neutralized poison in this game. But anyways, that that's it. That's an overview, guys. Let me know if you want to see more of the adventure as we try to figure out what's going on. In Throttle Hill. Apparently, Throttle's already been kind of taken over. There's already a bunch of bad guys here that we're getting attacked as soon as we get in. Uh, if you want to know what's going on, you want to see more of it, just let me know and uh, maybe we'll make some more videos.
But at least now you have kind of an overview of how the, the game works when you guys see me doing screenshots in the Discord and stuff. But this is old school, old school D&D gaming. We kept us entertained for hours. And it was fun doing different party compositions and what have you. Um, oh, real quick before I leave. So lower armor class is better. When my armor class improved, it went down to one. Uh, and if I equip this, if I unequip this shield and equip this shield, it goes down to zero. So that's even better. So you can see now my main tanky guy has a zero AC. So yay. But uh, let me know if you guys want to see more of these videos. I'll catch you later.